Revelation chapter 21. You will read verses 1 through 3. And then I'm going to pray. And when we're seated, we're going to continue to read some more verses from 21. So keep your finger in that spot. Once you found your place, the book of the Revelation of Jesus Christ, chapter 21, verses 1 through 3, let's all stand for the reading of the Word of God. Up if I get there right now. Chapter 2, a little, little bit of a mess. <laughs> and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. Now, Holy Father, this is something that is so. Lord, you showed it to our brother John, Lord, when you carried him in the spirit into the future. To show him things that must soon come to pass. And I pray, Lord, that we will take great joy and comfort this morning from these words. And we pray and we ask for this in Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated. I'm going to continue from verse 4 down to verse 7. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and true faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God. And he shall be my son. Go to the next chapter, 22, the first five verses there. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb, in the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river was there the tree of life which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the trees were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their forehead. And there shall be no night there, and they, no need, and there shall be no need of candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Now, in a very great many ways, 2021 has been an incredibly difficult year for a great many number of us. Not that there haven't been difficulties and hardships in the past, but just reflecting back on this year in itself, 
It's been a tough year. But, year 2021, like I say, is going to be one that's going to go down <laughs> in the annals of history as being very unique <laughs> in its trials and in its troubles. Not the least of which, of course, has been the man-made viral pandemic that's been released upon our world. I mean, it's nothing compared to what's going to happen in the seven-year tribulation period. And thank God the church won't be here for that. I mean, about our economy, in fact, the world's economy has taken an incredible nosedive. <laughs> Russia and China are very aggressively on the move in the world. One world religion, one world government has made great strides forward in this last year. Violence and crime are definitely on the rise uh, as we see the pursuit of justice decrease with the decriminalization of many offenses and so you know, criminals figure they've got a free hand sodomy and all its vile guises is not only on the rise but it's being pushed on all of us all around the world and the rise of persecution against Christianity continues to rise and Laodiceanism among the Church of Jesus Christ is spreading faster than the virus. Sad to say. Violent and unprecedented weather and natural disasters all over the world. A lot of them not even being reported on. Uh, deliberately, I'm sure. And I could go on and on and on and on with these depressing subjects. But that is not the point and subject behind this morning's message. One of the greatest blessings that we have in knowing that we have God's perfectly preserved words for us is he has placed within them the end result of everything that has been being exercised for these last 6,000 years and we know what will come in the millennial reign and thereafter. What is going to happen what the end result of God dealing with first Adam's generation of offspring. Because the end, as I have told you so many times, for the whole epoch of what is time, from the recreation of the earth to the end of the millennial reign, those 7,000 years, is to produce a race of beings free of sin who love God because they choose to. That's God's end of all that he is doing. At the end of the millennial reign of the Lord Jesus Christ, humanity moves into its next generation. A generation made possible by the last Adam. Emmanuel, God with us. The Word of God becoming flesh. Jesus Christ. Now, the Millennial Kingdom is indeed going to be a wonderful and marvelous thing. We're not going to read it, but if, if you on your own, read 1 Kings chapter 10. 
in the Old Testament. This is Solomon's reign. And it describes the glory and the wealth and the peace of that reign. And it is a type of the millennial reign that will be here on the earth. Now leading up to the millennial reign is the rapture of the church. The Lord comes and removes his bride before the seven years of great tribulation come upon the earth, the time of the Antichrist, the beast, Satan incarnate here on this earth. For us follows the judgment seat of Christ, where how we have served our Lord is measured. And our rewards, or not, are given. From here, we go to the marriage supper of the Lamb. A wonderful time. After the marriage supper, we saddle up. <laughs> we saddle up. Revelation chapter 19, the door to heaven's opened again, and our Savior returns to this earth leading his armies. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords return to take by force what is rightfully his. We have the conquering of the Antichrist allies, the battle in which we travel up the King's Road to the River Jordan and we cross over onto the West Bank travel up to Jerusalem where Christ triumphantly enters through the now closed eastern gate and from there on to the valley of Megiddo where the Lord by himself tells us to sit this one out goes into the valley of Megiddo and literally with a crushing defeat of the forces of the Antichrist that Antichrist, along with this false prophet, are taken and cast alive into the lake of fire, which in this time is going to be on the earth for that millennial reign. And Satan, our enemy, and I hope you're listening wherever you are, <laughs> is bound and locked in the pit for a thousand years. And like I say, what a thousand years that's going to be. We, in our new eternal bodies, are going to rule and reign with the Lord Jesus Christ on this earth. Every position of responsibility and authority will be held by one of the saints of God. And that will be our occupation, is representing the authority and power of our Christ on this earth. We'll be tasked with rebuilding human society and rebuilding it as the Lord would have it to be. Not like it is right now, where it's being ruled by the God of this world, which is the devil. There is going to be real peace. There is going to be real justice. There is going to be universal worship of the Lord Jesus Christ. And there is going to be legitimate prosperity for humanity. The utopian world that man has dreamt about and tried to bring about by his own machination is going to come onto this world as closely as it can be in a world 
that is still inhabited by mortal men under sin. Because okay? all the human beings that survive the tribulation and are going into the millennial reign okay, are still going to be mortal human beings under sin. For more faith, though, necessary, Christ is literally on the earth, sitting on his throne in Jerusalem. You can see him, you can hear him, you can talk to him, you can touch him. No more walking by faith. Therefore, it's going to be based upon your behavior in the millennial reign. But, like every human age that comes before it, every one of them, the millennial reign is going to end just like every other age in the human history. It ends in apostasy and rebellion. Our great enemy Satan is let loose upon the earth and he finds himself already and willing army of billions ready to follow him against Christ who's been here so that you can see him and they still hate him God and Magog will rise up in rebellion and God's not even going to mess with it then. He's just going to wipe it all and burn it all up. And that's God's, God's urban renewal plan. God's plan for the environment. He's going to burn it. And get rid of it. It's going to be gone. He's going to destroy not only the earth, but he's going to destroy the existing universe completely. Followed by the great white throne judgment of God. For the last will be first, and the first will be last, and the last to stand before God Almighty will be the devil. And he'll be cast into the lake of fire, where the beast and the false prophet are, forever and ever. Amen and amen. <laughs> then we come to the end of purpose of it all. We're right back at our text that we just read this morning. A new heaven. Heaven. Singular. Not heaven. No more first heaven, second heaven, third heaven. Third heaven being separated away from the other two by that glass. He's, there is no more sea. It's gone. God is no longer separated away from his creation and his creations because sin is gone. The corruption is gone. All new stars. All new stars in the heaven. All new planets in the heaven. And every last one of them is going to be habitable. You're going to need them <laughs> because the human race is just going to continue to grow and every one of those planets is going to be populated with people and the universe is just going to continue to grow and to grow and to grow without an unspeakable numbers of beings sinless who love God because they have chosen to do so. A new earth. This old hunk of junk is going to be gone. Okay? Gone. No more sin-cursed planet. It's going to be a place of constant, pleasant environment. No extremes in temperatures, no extremes in weather, no weeds, no thorns, 
No poisonous plants. I mean, no poison oak, poison sumac, none of that stuff. All gone. All of the animals, all of the animals are going to be good. And they're going to be tame. Well, where it talks about in the Old Testament about, you know, the little child leading around the lion and the bear and the tiger. And you see him getting hold of the hairs coming off the cat's face. <laughs> you know, it's nice kitty, right? <laughs> That's how it's going to be. It says that the, you know, the child can sit on a cockatrice den, a poisonous snake, stick its hand in it. Something going to happen. Not one dangerous creature among the whole bunch. Gone as well will be all the mess we've made of this planet, all the toxins, all the pollutants, all the trash. Okay? Gone, clean, pristine, and beautiful beyond our imagination. The whole planet will be as the Garden of Eden was when God recreated the earth and placed Adam in it. Then there's home. <laughs> but this earth, for us, will not be our home. We'll have business here. But our home is the New Jerusalem. No more sun, no more moon. The city of New Jerusalem is going to take its place in the sky. And it is an immense city. I didn't write down the the dimensions and things I know I've given that in the past and the thing is just incredibly huge. Whose walls and streets are made out of a gold so pure that it's transparent. I mean a little bit of gold floating around on this planet is nothing. <laughs> and you're gonna walk on it. The walls of the city and the buildings are going to be made of this gold. It has 12 foundations and every one of those foundations is made up of precious gems. It has 12 gates and each gate is an immense pearl. There's a clam. That, that, that's going to be a clam bait there. <laughs> Where that clam was at, that came for oysters or whatever it is. They kind of big, huge. And it is the place where those mansions that we've been promised by Jesus Christ himself, where he is right now producing, preparing, putting together for each and every one of us a mansion for us to dwell in. And David said in the Psalms, I'd be happy if I was could just be a doorkeeper in the house of my God. And I said, oh no. No, no, no. You're mansions. Mansions. And contained within that city will be the throne of God. And his light is going to shine throughout that city forever. In the city of the New Jerusalem, there is no night. There is no night. I'll tell you what's going to change in the new new creation. This becomes the center of the universe. And the new earth orbits around it. And that's where it gets its light. There'll be day and night on the new earth, but not from the sun. It doesn't need the sun. 
to God Almighty. Crystal clear river water of life says flowing out through that city from the throne of God. And on either bank the scripture says grows the tree of life. And the only way I can I can imagine think of that is the tree and you've got, you know, big like roots that go out over like like great arches over that. And the tree of life is gonna bear twelve different kinds of fruit, a different fruit every month. And it was the tree of life that Adam was free to eat from so that he could have eternal life. And it also says that the leaves of that tree are for the healing of the nation. That's going to be one of the things we're going to do is we're transporting these things out to all these. I mean, you're not going to be sitting around. You know how they they great little pictures. They got somebody up there lounging out on, on, on a cloud with a little heart. Uh, we're going to be busy. <laughs> we got to have stuff to do for our God. Because yeah, again, you have to realize these people, though they are sinless, though their circulatory system will return to what God had originally created it as, no more corrupt blood, it will be clear water of life flowing through the veins of people. But they can still get injured. They can still get hurt. Uh, and that's why the leaves are for the healing of the they need to eat from that fruit they need to have those leaves they, they still have that ability uh, they're, they're not eternal like the saints will be we get a body like the Lord Jesus Christ we can't die and I love where it talks about in Isaiah of us going following the Lord there uh, at the second advent his armies following along behind when we're following in ranks and it talks about how the, the, the enemy will try to kill us they will fall on the swords and, and, and it doesn't do anything do we just keep coming <laughs> you can't kill us <laughs> we don't die we're eternal for them though they need these things they have to receive these things Which again, the redeemed of Christ. What are, what are we going to be doing in eternity? Like I say, we're a special class of the family of God. Unlike the cherubim or the seraphim or the race of angels, the saints of Christ the adopted children of God, we are going to be a special group within the family of God. Like our Savior, we will have eternal bodies. We are not susceptible to death. We are going to be the only immortal beings who had once been mortal. We'll have no need of rest. We will experience no pain. We will not age. We will not get sick. We don't have to eat. We don't have to drink. Now we'll eat and drink, but strictly for the pleasure of doing it. No necessity for it. Christ proved that when he was here after his resurrection sat down and had some some fried catfish and honeycomb. <laughs> right? And as in the millennial kingdom, so will be our lives out in eternity. We will hold positions of responsibility and authority, but now well beyond the planet 
of the earth, but throughout all of God's universe. Remember in the parable back in Luke, uh, uh, where you had the servants of the Lord that God had given the, the pounds. Okay, and that parable was for the Gentiles. And the faith, first faithful servant says, okay, you've been faithful in a few things, be thou over many things. You know, be thou over ten cities. Next one, five. Well, how about, okay, be thou over ten planets. 